A ship carrying gas explodes in Boston Harbor. A Chinese dam collapses, unleashing a 50-foot tidal wave. The East Coast is plunged into days of darkness by a blackout. And in London, a train carrying nuclear waste crashes, enveloping the city in a radioactive cloud. These nightmare scenarios could happen because we have become addicted to energy. And like any addict, we don't care how we get our fix. But now, the consequences could lead to global disasters. Satisfying our energy needs has reached crisis point. The race is on to plug the gap between diminishing supply and growing demand. Especially for supply that is clean, green, and cheap. What will happen to the world a hundred years from today is actually fundamentally quite frightening. Many people don't appreciate just how frightening it is. So we need a new industrial revolution. America's Secretary of State for Energy, Professor Stephen Chu, is a Nobel Prize winning physicist. He deals in science fact. We had incredible energy resources, and so we built an infrastructure and a set of habits based on abundant energy uh, for 200 years. Rapid global industrialization has helped create global prosperity. But it also has addicted the world to fossil fuels now poisoning and warming our planet. In the next 20 years, we'll need 60% more power to satisfy the new emerging global economies. But what will be the source of that new power? Fossil fuels? Nuclear? Hydroelectric? Each has advantages and risks. Our generation's response to this challenge will be judged by history. For if we fail to meet it boldly, swiftly, and together, we risk consigning future generations to an irreversible catastrophe. Oil is the fossil fuel that drives the world's economy. Oil is black gold, dirty but precious. The world is hooked. If you look back at the history of the 20th century, in some ways, it is a history of oil. It's been a driver of geopolitics. It's been a driver of, of uh, military policy for a lot of countries. Uh, and it has, at the same time, it has been sort of the fuel for the engine of economic growth. The U.S. is a society built on oil. Transport, commerce, food, medicines, all inextricably linked to oil with a huge trillion dollar infrastructure built to support it. But the world's oil reserves are fast running out. We may already have passed the peak of production. Our reliance on oil also makes it a potent political tool. One used in the past and most likely in the future. U.S. government advisor and global energy security expert Paul Domjan understands the dangers. We remain hostage to a relatively wide range of possibilities for oil to be disrupted, any of which could, could cause problems of world trade or even cause economic growth to come to a halt. Disruption of supply by accidents and even terrorist attacks is now the global economy's Achilles heel. 80% of the world's oil passes in oil tankers through six narrow shipping channels, also known as choke points. 
The Bosporus Strait in Turkey connects Russia, the world's second biggest oil exporter, with the rest of the world. The Bosporus is probably the most likely single point in the world that would cause an, an oil shockwave globally. If the Bosporus were closed, 7% of the oil that every day goes on the open ocean and the long major international pipelines would cease to be shipped. Disruption of oil supply could throw the world into turmoil. Turkey, 2015. A tanker loaded with 150,000 tons of Russian crude oil navigates through the Bosporus, which is at its narrowest point, just 2,200 feet wide. Iran, Russia's main oil expert competitor, is suspicious of Russia's links with the West and oil deals in the Caspian Sea. A terrorist group with Iranian sympathies plows a suicide boat loaded with explosives into the Russian tanker. The sunken tanker blocks the Bosporus to all traffic. Oil markets react instantly to the news. As soon as the Bosporus is closed, phones will start ringing in trading floors around the world and oil prices will rise immediately. But there's worse news. Africa's biggest oil producer, Nigeria, is in turmoil after election results are contested. Oil has been systematically disrupted in Nigeria for political gain for the entirety of the last decade. The disruption in the Bosporus would provide a great opportunity for them to amplify the impact of their disruptions. Nigerian militants capitalize on the Bosporus oil market collapse by disrupting the oil wells. Another 5% of the global supply is lost. With 12% of oil supplies disrupted, prices spiral out of control. After just three days, motorists begin panic buying gasoline. People are forced to seek other means of transport. As oil prices increase, truckers protest blockading roads. But the price keeps rising. We could be well above $130, $140 by the end of it. And those are the kinds of prices that triggered the last recession. It takes four weeks to reopen the Bosporus. It's already too late. The world plunges into global recession. Is the United States prepared to deal with, with, with an, another oil shock? The answer is no. Is the world economy prepared to deal with another oil shock? The answer is no. Until we can develop alternative fuels for transportation, the world remains at the mercy of the oil markets. Weaning ourselves off fossil fuels is a slow and expensive business. But there is a fossil fuel that is relatively cheap and also plentiful, natural gas. Our existing sources of energy are running out and they are also polluting and warming our planet. Are we heading for crisis point? In an energy starved world, natural gas is becoming an increasingly attractive alternative for generating energy. It emits half the carbon of coal and one third the carbon of oil. Demand for gas is growing. But in its gaseous state, it is expensive to transport. So it is compressed 600 times and cooled, becoming a liquid gas known as LNG. One giant tanker can hold 36 million gallons of LNG in pressurized tanks, enough to power a city like Boston, Massachusetts for a week. But a tanker is extremely dangerous. LNG explosions are a firefighter's nightmare. Lancashire, England. Firefighters train for an LNG accident. The freezing liquid doesn't burn, but as it pours out of a ruptured container, it vaporizes and spreads uncontrollably. 
Now the gas cloud becomes highly volatile. Once ignited, it burns at 2300 degrees Fahrenheit, twice as hot as gasoline. If you had a large gas spill and it ignited, what's going to stop you initially getting too close to the fire is the radiated heat, which you can feel on your face now. The surrounding air becomes so heated, firefighters can't get close. This is just a small training fire. An accident in a busy port would involve millions of gallons of LNG.